Hi Moglets. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the five attributes of power or the requirements to get strong, uh, do more damage, all that good stuff. It's definitely going to be more focused towards beginners. So if you're a veteran, you probably know all this stuff already. But yeah, let's just go ahead and start off with the super obvious using our Lisa here. The first step is character growth. This is leveling and raising talents. That's basically it. This is probably the easiest to achieve. It is quite resource intensive, but leveling your character is very important because this is where your characters get their base stats. And the base stats are the stats that get based on everything else. I'd say most characters don't need to be level 90. It's a massive resource dump for not a lot of extra stats. So especially in the beginning, think twice about level 90 anyone. Your main DPS, and you know, we're gonna get into all the team stuff later, but they are generally worth 90. What you get from actually leveling up your character is only HP, attack, and defense, and not super huge amounts. Ascension, on the other hand, is where you get a much bigger boost of all this stuff, plus a special stat that is character specific. In Lisa's case, it's elemental mastery here. So what I was doing a lot in the beginning is simply ascending them to their last star but not giving them all the books and mora to get them all the way to 90. As far as talents are concerned it's important to understand what's important and what is not important for your specific character that you're raising. I obviously can't go through every character and tell you right now but hopefully if they're your main you already have an idea. For the beginning having their important talents at 6 is always a sweet spot. It's not too resource heavy and you get a good amount of the overall power of the talents. So I'd say number two has to be artifacts. Of course, in the beginning, you're just gonna be using what you get, what you have, and I'd recommend that it's not until about AR 45 where you really start farming artifacts because at that point you get a guaranteed five star per run and you can really start building out your characters starting with your main DPS. Again, artifact selection, the set, the stats on the artifacts is gonna be character specific. Though in basically all cases, goblet should be whatever element the character is if they're your main DPS. There's no physical element, but some characters are best suited for physical damage, like Eula and Razor. Then for some supports, they'd rather have elements of mastery, HP, or attack on the goblet, but that's another story. Same for circlet, it will basically always be crit rate or crit damage, depending on what you need more. The general rule of thumb is a one to two ratio, meaning twice the crit damage as crit rate. Main stat on sands will vary a lot, like uh, Hu Tao uses HP, Shogun often uses energy recharge, Ito uses death, so on and so forth. The majority of main DPSs will use attack though. But yeah, most characters have one single set, a four piece set that is the best for them. With some characters, it's better to go two two piece sets or even a broken set if there's nothing like specifically perfect for them. But I would say in the vast majority of cases, there's gonna be like a single four piece set that your character would prefer. And so when you're AR 45 and ready to start farming artifacts, take a look at your main DPS, make sure you're gonna be sticking with your main DPS for a while because farming artifacts is a pain. It's riddled with so many layers of RNG. And of course your artifacts don't have to be perfect at all, uh, especially in the beginning. Things do change from time to time as we get new artifact sets. Like for example, Shao, we recently got a new set for him. He's not a new character, but these are new artifacts. So if you go look at an old guide or whatever, and they're still suggesting two piece gladiator, two piece viridescent or whatever his best stuff was. Yeah, that could be a little bit of a problem. So always try and be referencing as recent stuff as possible. Next is weapon. This is roughly the same as artifacts. It's essentially just stats, but it also comes with a special passive. And again, most characters have a specific weapon that is the best for them. As a beginner, you're most likely not gonna have access to these. There are some exceptions like Albedo here. One of his best, if not just his straight up best, was a free event weapon. Weapons are usually something you don't really farm, but you know, you can do your weekly bosses and with a bit of luck, you can get prototypes. At this point in the game, we have quite a few different prototype weapons to, to choose from. You can eventually get them all up to R5 if you're lucky enough with uh, getting prototype drops from weekly bosses. Otherwise, you'll mainly be getting them from Gotcha. There are even some decent three-star weapons, but again, this is going to come down to the character you're raising. Most characters these days have a weapon that goes alongside with them, but again, this is very not free-to-play friendly. But there are always four-star alternatives, which are much easier to get and refine. Weapons are very important because they all come with base attack. And base attack is important because that gets applied directly to this white number here. The green plus 1400 is everything else. And this will be higher or lower based on your base attack. 
For a quick example of that, let's take a look at our Binny here. Binny is holding Skyward Blade, which has 608 base attack. Nothing else on the weapon provides him attack. The 1000 he is getting, as you can see, is just from artifacts here, 1082. The same as this green number here. However, when we would switch him to a Dull Blade, for example, and go back to his attributes, this green number has fallen by almost half. And remember, that green number was only from artifacts. We didn't change any of his artifacts, only his weapon. So yes, having a nice balance between base attack and whatever secondary stat is good. Most weapons do a pretty good job of balancing that. And for some characters, just the straight up attack stat isn't as important as other stats. When we take a look at the Primordial Jade Cutter, it has a lower base attack than most other five star weapons, but it has a massive amount of crit rate. In most cases, you do want a balance of attack, crit rate, and crit damage for overall damage. So we are now going outside of just one specific character and we're going to be talking about reactions. Reactions are a very important part of Genshin in general. This is going to largely depend on which element your main DPS is. If you have an Electro main DPS, it's mostly going to be Electro Charged or Overloaded. Pretty sure Electro Charged is more common these days, but it's kind of mainly good for like AoE situations. A lot of the Electros I use personally, I don't rely on reactions too much. If you have a Pyro main DPS, your main reactions are going to be Vaporize and Melt. In my experience, Vaporize is more common because of characters like Singcho. He can apply Hydra very, very quickly and consistently. But regardless, both of these reactions are purely damage bonuses. They don't do anything else. So if you have a Pyro main DPS, focus on getting some Hydro or Cryo supports. Hydro main DPSs are a little bit more complicated because how reactions work. It's quite difficult to get consistent Vaporizes while you're using your Hydro as the main DPS. So Hydros are more used for like Electro Charged or to apply Hydro for a Pyro main DPS, if you know what I mean. Cryo has two main options, which are Freeze and Melt. I'd say freeze is a little bit more common, but it's not useful everywhere. A lot of bosses cannot be frozen, but in places like Abyss, freeze can be very, very powerful because almost everyone in Abyss can be frozen. Freezing enemies does what it says. It freezes them, incapacitates them. It's a form of CC, but it's also really good in conjunction with the cryo four piece set Blizzard Strayer, where you basically have 40% extra crit rate when you're attacking frozen enemies. So if you have a cryo main DPS, this is definitely an option to go down. So now we kind of have the uh, outlier elements and their reactions are a little bit less straightforward. Uh, Geos especially I don't find to be all that useful. It's just going to kind of happen on its own. You'll drop like a Geo Crystal that provides you a shield here and there. I don't think it's something specifically worth building or focusing on personally. Geo main DPS is like Ito or Ningguang more rely on their team for buffs and not necessarily reactions. Animo is pretty much the same story. Most Animos are strictly supports. Shao is an exception here but again you generally don't focus on reactions to get more damage out of him, more so buffs from your other team members. Which is of course not to say animal reactions are bad or anything. When it comes to supports of course, with the 4 piece Viridescent set, reducing the elemental resistance by 40% is pretty huge. Physical damage dealers. Their one important reaction is going to be Superconduct, which is Electro and Cryo. This reduces the enemy's physical defense by a pretty large amount and is actually necessary when you're going to be running physical damage dealers like Eula. So finally, we're talking about team suggestion. This is, of course, going to tie into the last point about reactions, uh, because again, this is a team game and it's important to have team members that complement your main DPS. So naturally, you have to decide who your main DPS is going to be, because that's who you're building the team around. Let's just go ahead and pick one of my favorite main DPSs, Hu Tao, for this example. So Hu Tao is your main DPS. She is fine on her own, more or less. You can do some pretty cool stuff, but she can be better with some help from teammates. Before even knowing who to pair her with, it's important to have intimate knowledge of your main character. Make sure to read through and understand all of their talents, all of their little intricate details. If you want even more information, you can go to the Genshin Impact Wiki. This is like a fan run sort of site, but definitely some good information. And when you scroll down to the talents, uh, there'll also be like notes and special things if you want to get even more information that isn't even in the game. It's not strictly necessary to go outside of the game to learn your character character well enough, but if you want all the details possible, then yeah, you're going to have to reach a little bit outside. So let's continue using Hu Tao for this example and the thought process that goes behind picking a team out for her. So Hu Tao has a few main quirks with her. First of all, you want to use her E before even attacking, which boosts her power and uh, makes her attacks become pyro. That's all cool and everything, but she loses a percentage of her HP in doing so. She is somewhat self-sufficient in that she can heal herself with her burst. 
However, she does generally want to be under 50% HP for the most damage. So a good way to keep her in that range of 1 to 49% HP, when you can't always just use her burst whenever you want to, is a shielder. You can use Zhongli, Noel, uh, lots of shields out there, some stronger than others. Noelle is actually quite good as well because she can provide some healing, not a lot, but Hu Tao doesn't want a lot of healing. She wants an okay amount of healing that keeps her near that 50% mark without going over. And Noelle can provide shields as well as a bit of healing, so I think she's a really good uh, partner for Hu Tao too. Obviously Zhongli is better, but Zhongli is also a 5 star. So you have your main DPS's survivability more or less in check. That's good. In basically every other character's situation, you can go for any healer you want, but she is a bit of a special case. Some may choose just to ignore survivability and, and be good and just not get hit or whatever. But yeah, for the most part, I do recommend some form of uh, survivability. Next, we want to increase her damage. That's the only thing left, really. We can do this with the aforementioned reactions. That's always a good place to start. Hu Tao is a pyro main DPS, which means we want Hydro or Cryo for Vaporize or Melt. Sing Cho is perfect for this. With his burst, he will apply Hydro with every Hu Tao basic attack, as you can do this while he's not even on the field. The best supports are the ones that can do what they do while they're not on the field, because for the most part, your main DPS wants to be on the field doing damage. With just three-fourths of a team, she has pretty much everything covered. She has a damage increaser via Water Dude, she has protection and the little bit of healing she will need. Uh, when she can't get her burst off from Noelle. In this specific team, my fourth slot does swap around a lot uh, because I do usually have Zhongli and Noelle is also Geo. I would usually go for a second Geo, typically Albedo. Albedo doesn't strictly synergize with Hu Tao that well, but he has a lot of good off-field damage, which is good as a support as that means Hu Tao can continue to be on the field and attack enemies. Outside of that, Geo Elemental Resonance is very powerful when you have a shield. And there you have it. Obviously, I can't go through every combination of characters, Characters. That's just the sort of thought process I kind of go through. Making sure your main DPS can survive, that's going to be the most important because they can't do anything if they're dead. After that, it's all about increasing their damage. Of course, there are certain teams where you have like just supports and you're cycling constantly like the national team. I made a video on that somewhat recently. Very fun team, kind of goes against this where you have, you know, the main and then you build around. But yeah, it's pretty much it in a nutshell. I guess constellations get like an honorable mention. For four stars, I'd say it's reasonably possible to get several C6 just after time. Eventually you can afford to pick up constellations here in the star glitter exchange. So it is reasonably possible to get uh, some C6 four stars after a while, but there's really not much to say about it. Constellations are unique to the character. Naturally, they're going to make them stronger in specific ways, and you don't really have a choice as to what to get. So I didn't think it was worth really being in the main part of the video. But yeah, make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. If you have any further tips for your fellow players out there, feel free to drop them down there. Leaving a like or subscribing to the channel is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching. And until next time.